Welcome to this edition of Admissions Quest Boarding School Podcast. In this episode, we talk with Josh Clark, the Director of Admission at Hawaii Preparatory Academy. Welcome to Admissions Quest Boarding School Podcast. I'm Peter Barron from AQ, and today I'm joined by Mr. Josh Clark, Director of Admissions at Hawaii Preparatory Academy. A little bit of background, Hawaii Preparatory Academy is a K-12 school with a boarding program that begins in sixth grade. I've had the good fortune of knowing Josh for a number of years, dating back to his days at the Orm School, and I'm excited to talk with Josh today about Hawaii Preparatory Academy. Josh, welcome to the Boarding School Podcast. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and and jump right in. When I think about Hawaii, I I tend to think of the sun, I think of the sand, the surf. Being from the East Coast, I I consider it the ultimate paradise, and any chance I have to get there, I'm going to jump all over it. How does this fit with HPA as a college prep? Uh, boarding school. I mean, you have very rigorous uh, curriculum, and, and I'm just wondering how those two things uh, fit together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we really try to focus on is taking advantage of our location. So we view our location not as much of uh, as a liability as it is a benefit. Uh, let me give you a few examples. Um, the opportunity for students to actually study the sciences on the island um, can't be replicated anywhere. Uh, for example, we have Mauna Loa, and uh, Mauna Loa is the world's largest um, mountain. In fact, it's somewhere between 17 and 19,000 cubic miles, or 60 to 80,000 cubic kilometers. Now, the size of that mountain um, actually puts a dent in the Earth's crust. Right next to it is Mauna Kea, which is the world's tallest mountain if you measure from the base to the peak, versus um, what most people do, just measuring it from sea level to the top, which in that case, Everest would be the tallest. But if you Measure from the base of the mountain to the top, um, Mount Okay is 33,000 feet or just over 10,000 meters. So there's opportunities for students not only to look at uh, some of the volcanoes that have um, kind of uh, made these, uh, these huge uh, mountains, but also we have an active volcano right now called Kilauea. It's a, a shield volcano, which means it's a safe volcano. Most of the volcanoes that you hear about, like Mount St. Helens or others that are dangerous, are ones that are based on... Uh, two continental plates coming together and that builds enormous pressure. Shield volcanoes are much more safe and it gives opportunities for scientists to study them very, very close up. And uh, we've had Kilauea erupting since 1983 uh, continuously and uh, students can actually walk on land that is younger than they are. We have uh, up in Mauna Loa, we have the Mauna Loa Observatory where uh, the actual link between carbon dioxide and global warming was first established there at that observatory. On the ocean, we have our marine science classes where students can study everything from coral reef uh, studies and uh, degradation and public education to our uh, sea turtle research program, which is extremely unique. It's through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Um, the Hawaiian sea turtle is actually an endangered species. It's illegal to touch them, but uh, our students are able to work with these turtles under the direction and supervision of uh, a couple of NOAA scientists as well as with our program coordinator. And we've been doing that for the past 20 years and it's been given, uh, we've been able to give students the opportunity to really get into that to the point where some of them have actually, as high school students, gone to an international conference of scientists and presented their papers. and. Uh, have really impressed a lot of scientists all over the world. They've traveled to Greece and to Mexico for these conferences, and then many have gone on to study marine biology at the undergraduate and graduate levels because of their experiences in Hawaii. Um, Above and beyond that, uh, one of the unique things about our location is that we have a culture within a culture. Uh, The first myth to dispel is that we are part of the United States. You don't need a passport to come to the state of Hawaii. That's Um, good to know. It is. (laughs) But... uh, Students can come here and they can experience American culture just like anywhere else in the United States. But the advantage is, uh, which it's harder to find on the mainland of the U.S., is that we actually have an additional culture uh, superimposed on top of the American culture, and that's Hawaii and its history and culture here. So students can really become more multifaceted in understanding uh, the different cultures. And because of the history of migration to Hawaii, we've also had... Uh, immigration from Japan and China, uh, from Portugal uh, and the Philippines uh, and, and Spain. So we've actually had quite a bit of uh, international uh, migration over the past century to the point where we're a pretty cosmopolitan uh, set of islands and uh, the global education opportunities are available 
without even bringing in international students just because of our day student population. But then when we bring in students from all over the world and we have students from every continent in the world, uh, they really have the opportunity to have some great experiences through our international uh, day and education that we have, as well as just all the things that we have in the curriculum. How does that then fit with the other programs at HPA? Uh, are there opportunities beyond the sciences to reach out to the community? Yeah, um, I think some of the, the opportunities that we have, I'll, I'll go discipline by discipline. Obviously, in the sciences, there's a lot of opportunities. We have Keck Observatory up on Mauna Kea, and some of our students in the past have done some independent study courses with uh, the scientists there. The most recent one we had, they've just finished a, a year ago, where um, the mirrors up on Keck, they're almost irreplaceable. They're well over a million dollars each. And what they were finding was that uh, the mirror has to be, um, I guess, attached to uh, to some sort of a frame so that it can be moved around to focus the light into the telescope. And that attachment was so um, strong that it was actually cracking the mirror a little bit. And so uh, some of our students, along with the scientists up in Keck, actually started to uh, look at the different types of glue solutions that they could have to make sure that the mirrors were flexible enough that they could be moved, but rigid enough that they stayed onto the um, structure itself. Uh, we've also had students in the past work with uh, other organizations. We, um, In the sciences, we've had what's called Vognet, because every volcano rele uh, releases certain amounts of gases and, and ash. And what they've done is collect connected with other schools around the state uh, to look at the different uh, pockets of air quality around the state on the different islands to, to measure those types of things as, uh, as a way to see what the volcano is actually releasing. They've connected with a school up in Alaska as far as um, having conversations about um, global warming because usually tropics and the Arctic are going to be hit the first and the worst, and so we've tried to make connections through that. Um, if you go into the humanities, like the English and the history, um, we've had students actually go out into onto the island and they meet with the. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't mean to be uh, offensive in any way, but the the old timers of Hawaii, um, the people who've lived there all of their life, and they're able to get their living history documented, um, do these uh, interviews, and start to use that in their English class. In history, we have uh, a Hawaiian history course, and they actually take field trips out all over the island to look at the old Hawaiian architecture and structures that are centuries old and they can see some of the sacred sites to the Hawaiians and learn about their myths and legends as well as the interesting uh, connectedness between Hawaii and its history and America and its history which has not always been a positive experience uh, which has happened to a lot of native peoples um, and so students are able to learn some of that background as well so there's been a lot of opportunities to use our location and our island for those um, opportunities that you just can't replicate. It sounds like you're really integrating the broader community into the Hawaii preparatory curriculum. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the advantage is, that, for example, if you're taking your, the marine science class uh, and you have, let's say it's right before lunch, um, the teacher will take you in the bus, you'll go down to the ocean, you're going to get into your snorkel and fins, and you're going to go down and actually map some of the coral before you come back and have a late lunch. And that's, that's an opportunity that you're not always able to do up in uh, New England with the, the cold weather. So. No, no, not. You've got two months, three months max, right?